I'm going to do something just a little different. I want to read you a verse, and then I'm going to ask you a question, I think. Uh, this is the text for the day. Come and hear. All ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I think that's just tremendous. I think that's just amazing. But I have a question for you. you have any idea who wrote that? Well, me neither. It's in Psalm 66. That's where I am. Psalms chapter 66. And it just says, To the chief musician, a song or psalm. Got no idea who wrote it. And here's the point. It doesn't matter who wrote it. It's the scripture. It was actually written, authored by God. It's God breathed. The Holy Spirit moved on these men of old to write down what God wanted said. So it doesn't matter who wrote it in this case. I do enjoy, and I have my suspicions about this psalm, uh, I think it's David, but I think a lot of things are David that may not be. Like I still think Paul wrote Hebrews, even though they say, well, the language is a little different. Well, Paul got older. What do you want? You know, My language is not the same of my youth. Thank God for that. <laughs> my vocabulary used to be a lot more colorful, if somewhat limited, especially when I was in the Army. You learn all kinds of things in the Army. Thank goodness I've been trying to forget some of them. So anyhow, this is Psalm 66, and that was verse 16. I'll read it again. Come and hear, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily, God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Man, that's good stuff. That is good stuff. As you might suspect, the title of this message is Come and Hear. Come and Hear. The first thing I'm going to say about this is the negative. This is a command. It's not a request. But I just want to point this part out. It's not a request for you to come and talk. It's to come and hear. It's to come and hear. There's lots of people who want to come and talk. And usually they have absolutely nothing to say. Well, this man that wrote this, whoever he is. And yes, I suppose you probably could take this as a reference of, to Jesus Christ. He's got something for you to hear. So he says, come and hear. Come and hear. What we have here in the Psalms is the gospel in three simple words. Come and hear. Now I'm going to speak a lot more than three words. But the way this Psalm starts out is this. Verse 1 he says, Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye land. And then somehow down into verse 16, he ends up with this. Come in here. Come in here. What should you hear? You should hear everyone in the land making a joyful noise unto the Lord. <laughs> Unfortunately, normally you don't. But come in here. Come in here. This is the message of the gospel. This is what we tell people. 
Come and hear. Come and hear the truth proclaimed. Come and hear the message, the message, the message, one message of the Savior God. Come and hear the message of the Lord God, the just God and the Savior. Verse 2 says, sing honor to his name and make his praise glorious. Come and hear of salvation for sinners. Come and hear of the sovereign Lord who saves his people from their sins. Verse 3 says this. I really like this part. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. How what? How terrifying. You understand, to the average person, God is not terrible. God is not terrifying. And that's because the average person has no idea who God is. You understand? You read in this book. Anybody who ever met God hit the floor yeah. on their knees. Yeah. Isaiah, I saw the Lord high lifted up. What did he say? Woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. What? I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people who don't know God. Come and hear salvation for sinners. Come and hear of the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And here's this. This is what we do. We believers, we come and we hear. What? What the Lord has done for my soul. You understand, when I come to hear the preaching of the gospel... I'm looking for somebody to be describing the same thing that God did to me. Yeah. It is, in the words of Jesus, a common salvation. Amen. That's right. Okay? It is, in those same terms, a common gospel. Mm -hmm. He is, and I don't want to use this, he is the singular Lord who saves. Yeah. And he saves in the same manner. Paul said what? After the pattern of what, how he saved me. Right. Now granted, God did not appear to me while I was on a donkey on my way to Damascus. Right. No, but he revealed himself to me. You understand? I started to know somebody I never knew before. Right. Saul of Tarsus never knew God before this. Right. He thought he did. Studied at the feet of Gamaliel. Studied the law. A Hebrew of Hebrews, as pertaining the law, blameless. But then when God appeared to him, what did he say? Who are you, Lord? Yeah. Who are you, Lord? This is Saul of Tarsus. Yeah. You understand? He's the poster child for telling you that education doesn't save. Amen. Proper doctrine doesn't save. Who are you, Lord, is the one who saves. And I'm going to tell you, he's one you never knew before. Even if you did know proper doctrine, even if you were brought up in the truth, until he reveals himself to you, you will never come and hear. Because coming and hearing is not a natural act of a man. It never has been. Salvation is of the Lord. Yeah. Salvation is of the is from the Lord. It's his gift. But this is what we do. We come to hear. We come and hear. Yeah. Now, the question is, do you want to? Most of the world does not. 
most of the world does not want to hear of this God. Oh, they want to hear of a God, maybe. Fine. They want to hear of their own God. But that doesn't help anyone. Because here's that next statement where it says, come in here. The next part of this verse. The psalmist is very, very specific here. All ye that fear God. Mm. Now here's something not spoken of in today's religion. Fearing God. Fearing God. People think it's a bad thing to fear. I don't want to live in fear, and neither, neither do I. But I'm going to tell you this. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. And you will know that if it has ever happened to you. And if you don't know that, you best make your calling an election sure. Amen. Because God is not just a scary concept. God is a scary person. You understand, you come to realize that here is God somewhere, everywhere, and you're right here. You're right here. And listen, you're less than the small dust of the balance to where if he turns his head, you breathe, you're gone. You know, it don't even take a word from God for you to be gone. All it takes is a thought. Because his thoughts aren't our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. What are they? They are much higher. They are much higher. Most preach a warm and fuzzy God who wants everybody to be saved and loves everybody and all the world should be just sweetness and light. But he's not and it's not. He's not sweet and fuzzy and the world ain't sweet and fuzzy either. This world is cursed. Uh, that's something else he'll, he'll make you come to realize. See, there's, there's, <coughs> excuse me, there are some people who get close, and I'm talking secular people, you know, to the fact that there's something wrong here. There's something wrong with man. There is something wrong with people, but they don't know what it is. We're sinners, folks. Mm -hmm. We are sinners who actually sin. Yeah. Sinners is what we are. Sin is what we do. Yeah. And yes, there are some good things in this world. And I'm glad for them. But that doesn't take away one sin. Right. There are things that people do that are good, as far as I can see. But my sight doesn't matter. Understand, there are people who give to charities to make themselves feel good. That's not godly, folks. That's selfish. And if you go around and brag about it, that's pride. You're just compounding the problem. Now, I'm not against, you know, you understand, Jesus Christ told us we're going to have the poor with us always. But that doesn't mean we can ignore them. I mean, I'm all for giving to the poor and taking care of people as best we can. I'm not against any of that. But don't kid yourself that that gives you anything with God. Because here's what the, the psalmist says. He wants to know who fears God. Oh, uh, come and hear. Who? All ye that fear God. That's where he laid it. Now that condemnation that, that Paul quoted in Romans where he says, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Here's the problem. They don't know that's a condemnation either. But it is. If you don't fear God, you don't know God. Jesus Christ said it in one way. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. 
Come unto me. People want to stop there. Christ didn't stop there. He said, all you that labor and are heavy laden. So, what about all those who don't know they're laboring and don't know they're heavy laden? He wasn't talking to you. Not there. I mean, you can say what you want, do what you will. And people will leave parts out of the scripture and people will add parts in. But here's the thing. If you're not laboring and if you're not heavy laden, Jesus Christ wasn't talking to you when he said, come unto me. And I will give you rest. Because here's the thing. If you're not laboring and if you're not heavy laden, you won't come and you won't hear. That's the way it is. Like I said, coming and hearing are not natural to man. They are the actions from the Holy Spirit in a man. First John chapter 4. I'm going to take a look at that for just a minute. Of course, you can't read 1 John chapter 4 without verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye, that the, spirit, know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. God manifest in the flesh is our Lord Jesus Christ. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Where have ye have heard that it should come? And even now already it is in the world. And that was going on 2,000 years ago. Do you think the world has gotten any better, folks? No. I think it's worse, at least as far as evil men and seducers are concerned. But here, verse 6 is what I wanted to get to. We are of God. He that, what? Knoweth God, heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. If you won't hear the truth, you're not a God. I don't know how I can be any plainer than that. Because that's what he's talking about. When he said, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. What's the beginning of knowledge? From the scripture. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Come in here, all ye that fear God. All ye that fear. Come in here. And what about those who don't fear? They won't come and they won't hear. I believe and categorically want to state that I believe Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Walter and I heard a radio broadcast decades ago, decades ago. And some guy was telling a story about he was preaching a message and this fellow stood up in the church and said, do you believe Jesus Christ is coming to flesh? And he said, what? He said, do you believe Jesus Christ is coming to flesh? Well, the answer is yes. That's all you got to say. Yes, I believe Jesus Christ came in the flesh. But he played it off like, don't ask no stupid questions. You're silly. Sit up, shut up and sit down. No. I'll answer that question. You understand? Walter and I, I know because we've both done it and we still do it, we will talk to those that don't fear God. If they come. But they won't hear. I'll answer any question put to me if I can. Now, if it really is a stupid question, you might get a stupid answer. Because I'm good at those too. But here's the thing. Coming and hearing is only for those that fear God. This coming and this hearing. 
Because what does it say? All of you who have uncirc who are uncircumcised in heart and ears do always resist the Holy Ghost. They always resist the Holy Ghost if their hearts and their ears are uncircumcised. What's that mean? They're not going to hear and they're not going to understand. Why? Because they can't. And I can tell you this as a child of God, there used to be a time when I couldn't understand. There used to be a time when I wouldn't hear. And if I did hear, I didn't like it. I didn't want it. I didn't want to come and hear. Um, but I do want to point out, we're not excluding anyone. The gospel does that. The truth will do it. Understand, Jesus Christ said, I came to bring a division. I bring a sword. What's his sword? His word. And his word is all we have. You know, it's sola scriptura. Solely the scripture. That's our only basis. Authority. This is our only message. And I refuse, as best I can, to not vary from it. There are lots of people that if you just change a just change a word or two, or don't use a certain word, you know what'll happen? More will come in here. That's what they think. But if you start preaching the truth, unvarnished, the sovereignty of the Lord Jesus Christ to save his people from their sins, they won't have it. They might come, but they won't hear. And they're not coming to him, they're coming to church. Because here's the thing. Walter and I were texting a little bit yesterday, and he texted me back this. And I, I wrote it down, Walter, because it's good. Come and hear. What does that mean, really? It means to obey and to submit. Yeah. You understand? The Lord, the Lord God from heaven said of the Son, this is my beloved Son. What did he say? Hear ye him. Yeah. Amen. You understand? If you're hearing Jesus Christ, you're going to submit your wishes, your desire, your will, as best as you can, but you're going to submit to him. Yeah. Amen. And what he says, that's what it means to hear. And you're coming because he said to. <laughs> you know, I'm coming of my own free will. No, you're not. Or you're not coming. He's not going to drag you kicking and screaming. Well, you might scream a little at times, but that's got nothing to do with this. This is the thing. He's going to draw you. What was it? With everlasting loving kindness. I'll draw you. Oh, I like that. But come, obey the Lord. Come to him and hear him. Hear him. Listen. Comprehend. Submit your understanding to his understanding. It's a hard thing to do at times. It is. But I like to do it. <laughs> I'd like to do it more, Walter. I'd like to submit my will more. Uh, like we said a few weeks ago, I want to be a better man. I'd like to be a better man. But I'm still me. But thank God, he's still him. He's still Christ. And you understand, no matter what I want, no matter what I will, no matter what I do, nevertheless, he will never leave me nor forsake me.
Now, buddy, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. You understand? That's what, you know, well, if you do this, you'll be lost. Uh-uh, he ain't never lost anything. And he had never lost anyone. And he never will. And everyone he calls, he tells them, come and hear. Obey and submit, both. But here, what the psalmist says, and I will declare what he hath done. You understand? The message is never, 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 look what I've done for God. Oh, that, that, now, that's the message of preachers all around us. Yeah. But that's not the message of the psalmist. That's not the message of grace. I want to know what he's done. I don't care what you've done. Yeah. Nothing personal. Not being facetious. Not being flippant. But I come to hear what he's done. Yeah. The child of God doesn't say this. He also doesn't say, let me tell you what you can do for God. Because I can tell you this right now. You can't do anything for God. And I don't care what some preacher says. He doesn't need your hands. He doesn't need your feet. And he doesn't need your mouth. Now, he may be pleased to use all three. But he don't need them, folks. Our Lord is God. Jesus Christ is God Almighty, manifest in the flesh, ascended up into heaven. He doesn't need us. We need him. Quit trying to bribe people in to make them feel good for doing something for God. No, tell them, you're, tell them their wretch is undone without his sovereign grace. Jesus Christ has no needs. But I'm here by his grace to declare what he hath done. I'll give you just a little bit of it. Substitution. Sacrifice. Redemption. Salvation. Righteousness. Justification. Now, those are all fine, big words, but that ain't even the half of it. Right. Amen. Well, you got to say, come in here. Yeah. All you're going to get is a little bit at a time because all we got is this, lot of, this, this allotted amount of time and all we've got is this allotted amount of brains. We can't hold that much, and we certainly can't speak it without him at all. But there's some small words that I want to tell you about, too. If there is such a thing. Grace, mercy, life, love, guidance, guidance, comfort, peace, and saved. You understand? All of those words, the big ones and the little ones, guess what? That's what he's done for my soul. Yeah. And I'm not bragging, except I'm bragging on him. Mm -hmm. hey, none of it's me. No. Not substitution, not sacrifice, not redemption, not salvation, not mercy, grace. None of it's me. It's all him. Amen. It's all him. Yeah. I want to know what he's done. That's what I come to hear. Yeah. Is what he's done. Don't tell me what I've done. I know what I've done. You know, I really don't need all that rub back in my face. Okay, sometimes you can. I'll let Walter do it. Y'all leave me alone. But this is, the, this is the way it is, you know? People come to be cheered up. Listen, if coming here doesn't cheer you up, there's something wrong with you. Right. Yeah. Right. You understand? The child of God loves the gospel. You know why? Because it's about him. Yeah. It's about him. The gospel's not about me. It's about him. And what he has done, wait a minute, for my soul. For my soul. We're talking serious business here. But I'm going to tell you this, it's a joyous business 
if you fear God, if you fear God, the world is boring and depressing. Y'all preach the same thing all the time. Yes, we do. Because hopefully, by his grace, we preach the same Christ every Sunday. And every day at work, if we get a chance. And every day with our family, if we get a chance. Because here, I will declare that he has saved me, the sinner. I will declare that he brought me to my knees before his feet. What? Come in here. Come in here. I will declare that he chose me and loved me from before the foundation of the world. Come in here. Come and hear that. I will declare that he has his remnant in this world right now according to the election of grace. Yeah. Yeah. I'll declare what he's done. I will declare that he has saved sinners, and I'll also declare he continues to do so. Come in here. Come in here. Because I'm not really here to share my life with you. Although sometimes you get a few bits of it because it bleeds out. Because I'm talking from my experience. You know? But that's not why I'm here. I do want to as best as I can, share the blessings of Christ has given me. And he's given me it all. And he's given you it all if you fear the Lord, if you fear God. Because I want you to know this Christ also. Because it's a lot more fun having a conversation with somebody who knows the Christ of God than with somebody who doesn't. And that's just the way it is. And that doesn't even matter if we're talking football. It's just best to talk to your brother and your sister. Best to talk amongst family. Come in here, and I will declare what he has done, and like I said, for my soul. For my soul. You know what those three words for my soul mean? Well, what they mean to me is the health and wealth gospel is a waste of breath. Because that's not what you're supposed to come in here. The big money, oh, the seed money gospel, that's an abomination. That's what it is. Sorry if you like them people, that's your problem, not mine. You got to talk to the TV every now and then. It's there. Now that probably won't make it. I don't know how long I've been doing this. It don't matter. Don't go there and don't listen. Because I want to declare what he's done for my soul. And I want to hear what he's done for somebody else's soul. Because I'm willing to bet this. If it's the same Christ, he did the same thing. You understand? I can identify with the Apostle Paul's conversion. Saul of Tarsus. What do you say? There were people around me. They saw the light. But they didn't hear the voice of him that spoke to me. What? They were right there. He wasn't, on the, on, he wasn't riding to Damascus on a donkey by himself. There was a caravan or whatever. There was a party. I don't think he was going there to put people in jail by himself either. I'd say he had some armed backup. But guess what? None of them heard a word when God was speaking to Saul of Tarsus. I know exactly what that feels like. I didn't see no light like that. I didn't hear a voice in my ear. But I remember being backed into a corner. And I told you this, Walter, years ago. I had nowhere else to go. This man here. And this book, with his word in it, and the little bit of preaching that I had heard, scared me. Yeah. You know why it scared me? Because it told me of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't scared of the guy preaching it. I wasn't scared of the book. 
I was reading the thing. But I was scared of the one that was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the child of God will tell you of the spirit of bondage unto fear. And if you fear God, you're going to know a little bit about what he's talking about. I'll tell you what he's done for my soul. He made me fear, and then he gave me the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We get the spirit of, spirit of bondage under fear once. And after that, no more. It doesn't say anything more about it. But now the spirit of adoption whereby you can, eat, you can cry, Abba, Papa, Father. So what's the conclusion of this whole matter? Verse 20, blessed be God. Yeah. <laughs> you can add anything else you want to. Because you understand, before you get to this point, uh, verse 10 says, For God, for thou, O God, hast proved us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Uh, thou hast brought us into the net. Thou laidest affliction upon our loins. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through water, but thou brought us, us out into a, I like this, a wealthy place. Yeah. Then he goes on, I'll pay my, I'll pay my burnt offerings. <coughs> I'll make the sacrifices. Why? That's the picture of Christ to God. Yeah. Then he says, come in here. You want to know why? Because now I got something to say. And here it is. Blessed be God. <laughs> Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. I said it a little while ago. I will never leave thee, no, no never forsake thee. So here's the thing. Come in here. Blessed be God. Because if blessed be God is not the message, I don't want to know about it. Because you're just wasting my time. I want to know the good things he's done for my soul. I want to come and I want to hear. And by his grace, I shall. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this time and this place. Be with Walter as he comes to preach your gospel. Help us to receive it and hear it and understand it. Lord, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory for it's all your work through your Son, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen.